And what Fawcett is doing, basically, we're a nonprofit. We're one of the longest standing kind of like Bay Area based um, organizations that really tries to kind of like advance ambitious science and technologies with the clear purpose that it ought to be for the benefit of life. And so we support a variety of different areas, including intelligent cooperation, which is kind of our term for decentralized computer science, um, crypt cryptographic computer science, cryptographic machine learning, and so forth, with a uh, kind of like approach to, uh, that that could have potential implications for AI safety as well. Molecular machines, that's our founding vision. We were founded on uh, a vision of molecular manufacturing uh, in the book Engines of Creation. Um, we've recently uh, added a newer tech track that uh, Randall here is uh, chairing, so thanks for that. It's been really, really fun to collaborate on this. Uh, and we have a big longevity biotech track as well, uh, a new space track since last year, and the existential hope track is kind of like our track, the philosophical track that binds it all together into like, let's work on positive applications of these technologies. How do we do this? Uh, we do this through virtual seminars. So many of you here are in one of our virtual seminar groups. Is that correct? Some of you are in like more than one. Uh, I, I'm pointing those out because once a month we meet virtually in, for example, the newer tech group. So any project development that comes out of this that either warrants an in-person workshop or a virtual seminar, um, just message me and we can get it going because there's a group of about two or 250 uh, people working uh, on these types of technologies. So you have much more, a little bit of a community there. Uh, we also do prizes and fellowships. So I already mentioned many of our fellows are here. Thanks a lot for joining. If you're interested, for example, in becoming a Foresight Fellow, applications are open or just talk to me. We've also done a bunch of prizes and one thing that could maybe come out of this is a newer, uh, like oh, a whole renovation focus prize. Uh, we'd be open to exploring that for sure. So if you have specific ideas on this, please let us know. Um, and we do in-person events. This is really our bread and butter, where we basically get kind of like uh, kind of like our leading seminar presenters, fellows, prize winners, and so forth together once a year in each of these technological tracks to really work on the technologies uh, in these areas. We also have a kind of like fun uh, fact called the tech trees, in which you really try to kind of like uh, monitor or like uh, I guess mostly like kind of like really map the space of a specific technological development. Um, and so for each of our individual tracks, we're just trying to kind of like get a little better of a um, head start onto how these technologies may be going so that new talent and funders that are entering the fields and that are emailing me a lot about how they should best plug in, I'm like, I really should not tell you this, um, uh, that we can point them to somewhere so that uh, people can kind of like self-organize a little bit in these kind of like uh, in, in these ecosystems that are still relatively fresh. But today we are here to discuss our workshop. And so uh, maybe I'll run you briefly through what it is that we're about to do before I hand it over to Anders on to uh, how it actually is that we will be doing this kind of in practice and he will be giving you a bit more of a kind of like topical presentation. But why do we have a whole brain emulation and AI safety workshop now? Well, we've always wanted to do this. I already said this yesterday with Anders together. It never seemed urgent. Now with timelines coming down, uh, AI timelines coming down, not necessarily whole brain emulation timelines. Let's see if they can come down with this workshop. Uh, that's on you to figure out. And so the goal really is to um, explore if AGI timelines, um, well, if, if whole brain emulations are viable. So, you know, how short are AI timelines? whether whole brain innovations can be speeded up significantly by a concerted effort, and if this doesn't introduce other risks and ethical concerns. So there will be plenty of like kind of like ethical discussions as well that we also have in the prompts um, uh, that were handed out to you. Now, how do we usually do this? All of our technical workshops follow roughly the same program, and then we kind of like tailor it towards our individual kind of like uh, themes that we explore. Um, here we have our confirmed presenters. So if, for example, you want to find out more about someone's bio that they maybe haven't linked yet from the one pagers, uh, you can just click on these links and they will show you um, everyone who's here. Um, a few of them may still be arriving in like a few minutes, so we'll give them a warm intro. Um, but here's the agenda. So we already had uh, drinks that were really uh, drinks and kind of like a gathering that were open up to everyone yesterday. Now today is Monday. Uh, we've already done the introductions, yay, amazing. Uh, now we're discussing the workshop goals. What's going to happen after this is that we're gonna have three blocks of lightning presentations. And they're always roughly an hour and a half long. We scheduled extra time just to be sure that we can have it if we need it. But we really encourage you to keep those short and sweet because we wanna get talking according to specific focus areas. And the inter-presentations are really just that we can kind of like create little 
I guess it's not really a shelling point because it's through coordination, but like little bubbles uh, on which people can coordinate more on the things that they are actually collectively interested in. Um, we will have three different slots of those. Um, then we'll um, then we'll be having, and in this one we'll have some virtual presentations as well. Then from those lightning presentations, we have the working group formation. How does that work? So basically, after each of your little intro talks, I will be asking you to give me uh, a question of like, how can we, or how might we? I will be collecting all of the questions on the whiteboard, and they will then be the base from which we uh, create working groups afterwards. And so there will be this session will be a little bit focused on like synthesizing other different questions that people are interested in solving. If so, you know, that could be one working group. Um, you will have some more time again to kind of propose a, another topic if you think something important hasn't been mentioned yet throughout the lightning talks. Um, and then we will kind of like roughly uh, kind of group according to these working groups. You have some time to go into other areas in the room for about 30 minutes. See if that's actually something you could be interested in working on in that particular group, if you need someone else to work on it. And then you have some time before we do breakout drinks to come back here and coax other people from other groups. So let's say you really need this one expertise, uh, you have some time to try to steal other people. Um, then we do breakout drinks. And again, those are drinks that are, can be entirely unrelated uh, to the workshop topic. So just if you have something that you, know, like you think people are really, really interested in, if you think that there's an underexplored area that you think is really important for the long-term future, that's a great time to do so. Also, if you just want to take a stroll and make it a brave free zone, then just grab a few people and like, you know, like walk around these absolutely beautiful premises. Um, and then we're serving dinner. Um, and it, whenever it says mentorship pairings, this is a great time for our fellows and mentors to get paired. So if you haven't picked a mentor yet and would like to, just talk to Neve and we'll get it going. Um, wonderful. Then they, so I should say the lighting presentations, they will be mostly be based on these intros and one pages. So I think by this time, no one should be surprised to see this page. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, uh, we'll be starting off in the exact chronology of these one pages. Um, a few of the we have asked a few people prior to this uh, to kind of like kick us off to warm up the room. They have about seven minutes time um, to do their uh, their presentation. I linked the slides whenever I could find them here from the doc. Um, and so that we can really get kind of like a very fast iteration going. And it will be about, um, yeah, about seven minutes for the first uh, rounds of presentations with three minutes Q&A and will be very German at timekeeping. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, you, you really have kind of like here the space to explore other people's profiles, to kind of follow along um, as you go. I'm just <laughs> editing this. Um, and, and yeah, so this make, make this your collaborative doc for today. Um, and after we've done the lightning presentations uh, and we have the working group formation, um, I'll go back to the schedule here. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be meeting again here for some kind of like my, my networking. One session that we'll be doing to this, during this networking time uh, is also um, a grieving session. And so usually it's really useful to kind of actually, before you actually get started working on the project proposals themselves, uh, it can be quite helpful to just get everything else uh, along the way, out of the way, that you think would be holding back progress. So there'll be a little session where, where we'll be discussing all of the things kind of that are non-technical that you think are holding back the field. Uh, and this could be a grieving and a headache session. Um, and we, we may um, even come up with a few solutions. Um, anyway, after that, you'll be divided across uh, the Rhythm Abbey in your working groups uh, to really uh, work on these uh, Heilmeier Catechism slides. And so basically, at the end of uh, tomorrow, mo tomorrow morning morning session, ideally you have filled out um, kind of like these slides. They will then make it into our workshop report and they will be the base for your final project presentations. And so uh, really try to take this seriously after we founded the working groups. This is really uh, not just here to kind of like, yeah, I guess explore a philosophical problem, but really, really try to kind of like get concrete about this. Um, after the workshop, we have small grants available of one, two, and three K, which are gonna be for the kind of winning first, second, and third prize proposals. And that's really only for you to flesh out what this could, proposal could look like. If th they are promising and people here agree, then there is funding available uh, to explore them in a more significant way. And so please also fill out really what the kind of like long-term goals are and so forth. Midterm and final exams would be really useful to know what this project could actually look like uh, because there is significant interest in actually getting these going. So don't just take this as a philosophical exercise. Um, finally, uh, here we have 
the working group presentations tomorrow morning, uh, sorry, uh, in the afternoon. So everyone in the group format will be presenting these one, uh, these one pagers that you will then have created. And then we'll be discussing next steps. And this next step session is really all about how can people in this room help these projects along. For example, should this be another mini workshop? Should this be just like two people get excited about it, they want to get it going maybe across different universities or independently, they need X amount of funding. Are there other people that will be open to advising even if they can't fully join the project? So do take this seriously. Um, and then we have more break and spontaneous breakout uh, uh, programming. And so, yeah, in this uh, session, you kind of like have some time to kind of flesh out if you actually want to work on this or do something entirely different or take another walk. So there'll be plenty of time um, to, uh, yeah, to get to know each other again uh, and to do some announcements about like any opening positions that you may have, just that people when they leave here have a good understanding of like individual follow-ups as well. And then we're going to have breakout drinks and uh, dinner is served. Um, so this is roughly what we're going to be doing throughout uh, the next two days. I will be explaining the steps along the way as we get through them as well, but I think it's a good un understanding like at the beginning of this, kind of like what you can be tumbling out uh, with at the end of this. And so again, I think a low hanging fruit from this workshop would be you've met someone that uh, you may want to collaborate with uh, on something you know, specific. Higher hanging fruit, like middle hanging fruit, is you've actually found a new idea. Uh, that you uh, want to pursue in the space. And then the kind of like highest hanging fruit that we're definitely going to try to pick is we actually collaboratively come up with a few project proposals that people get excited about uh, and that could then be funded or explored through wor further workshops, prizes and what have you. And so please really try to reach for the highest hanging fruit. It's okay, the others are also good, but we're also really here to get some work done and we have plenty of social time in between uh, for you to also connect. Um, great. So I think this is all from me. I do want to say this process has been really successful in the future for people getting funding, starting companies and so forth. And so do take this seriously. If you have questions about this at any point along the way, just talk to us. Um.